So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create uh, basically a camera that you can look at the sun. Uh, I'm going to be using a cell phone camera, I'm not making a camera. Um, but if I just point this at the sun, it'll either A, burn out the CCD array and several other things, or B, I'll just get a really bright blotch in the video. So what we have to do is block out a lot of the light before it reaches the, um, yeah. So the almanac.com or something mentioned uh, soot filters. So I've, what I've been experimenting with is to Take a camera, take a candle, and uh, get it burning, and then um, you just uh, run some glass through the flame, and it deposits a layer of carbonaceous stuff onto the glass. And I've, I found several websites indicating that this is a very bad idea, but we're going to do it anyways. But then we're not going to look through our eyes; we're going to look through this. And um, what this is for is uh, if you've ever tried to look at a camera that's not designed for outdoors, um, you can't really see what's on the screen because there's too much light coming in. So this, I'm just going to try to uh, position my solar filter right here and then I'll hold my camera right here while looking like an extreme dork. I hope you get it. All right, so now that we got the camera, I mean the candle burning, uh, here is some brand new microscope slides. So some tips that I figured out trying to do those is um, you don't want to touch that part of the um, glass. It's okay to touch one end, but wherever you touch, you're going to be smearing fing fingerprints all over, which interferes with the deposition of the soot. So another thing is, is if you're holding it way up here, trying to keep the glass from breaking, it's never going to deposit any soot. So put it down in the flame, and then you'll get some soot. And uh, I really haven't figured out a method of depositing, uh, depositing it evenly um, other than to just go over a lot of different times. But I have a theory that um, statistics will allow me to generate a more homogeneous filter just by having many layers. So I've actually got about four or five slides that I'm going to be retrying this with. Um, and if you get this layer as good as possible, and then you do the other side of that as good as possible, and then you do that, and then you do that, and you do that. Um, if this one randomly has a hole right here, but the next one down randomly has a hole right there, and then the next one down has a hole in a different place, it's just highly unlikely that all of the holes are going to line up in uh, the same point. <laughs> uh, cylinder. It's not really a two-dimensional uh, filter anymore if you have so many of them. So another theory that I've been thinking about is um, the soot is unburned hydrocarbons, so you might be able to generate a better soot with a different uh, sized flame, because once you put this down on it, it's like starting to starve it for oxygen so it doesn't burn as efficiently, so it's emitting more of a hydrocarbon gas um, as this black smoke. Now, as you can see, this is really a lot darker of a filter. 
So I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I also have a hot glue gun. So a lot of the websites that said not to do this, which by the way, don't do this. This is dangerous. Uh, they were concerned that you would easily wipe the soot off. So um, I am going to like glue the slides in place in order to minimize handling them, especially where I want to have multiple slides all working together. I mean, I've only got two hands. I can't hold a slide and hold a slide and hold a camera. So I'm going to just glue it over the hole in the box. I don't know if I pointed that out, but this flap and this flap and this flap and this flap don't all meet up. So there's a rectangular hole right there. And hopefully that'll be big enough for the camera, which looks like it has like less than a millimeter of an aperture there. So that ought to be a plenty big hole. Okay, so I have some paper towels and I'm just going to wipe off a small amount of soot from over here. Making sure that I'm not cutting into my viewing area so that I can glue the next one probably on the box and the glass so that they're overlapping. Dead air. I think of something to say. I haven't mentioned this already. Just buy some $2 uh, solar eclipse viewing glasses. Um, it's not worth damaging your eyes on a failed experiment. However, I was reading about uh, this ophthalmologist was saying on this one website that you can glance at the sun up to about 30 times. Um, so one glance at the sun, whatever that means, it wasn't rigidly defined, and that's part of the reason why it's not actual medical advice. One glance at the sun isn't really going to damage your eye. And in fact, I have viewed the sun just staring at it for several seconds, I believe. It was a long time ago, and it's a very stupid thing to do. But you have to raise the temperature of your retina by like 4 to 10 degrees Celsius in order to the class is getting hot. Um, speaking of raising it, <laughs> uh, you have to raise the temperature of your retina by several degrees Celsius, upwards of 10, to start actually doing physical damage. But even with the two to three degree temperature raise and the photochemical. Uh, generation of radicals, you're still going to be damaging your vision. So, yeah, even if it doesn't burn a hole in your eyeball, it's, it can still make you go blind. So, take care of your eyes. <laughs> Buy a real solar filter. And by the way, when I go to view the eclipse, uh, I believe in a couple of days, we actually have some, we have some, uh, professionally made solar glasses to use. don't want the two pieces of glass 
to slide against each other because that will uh, scrape off the layer. Like this stuff is really easy to damage. So I'm gonna let these two pieces of glue dry and then probably splice in a video from this camera's perspective right here looking at the sun and hopefully this camera will work afterwards all right see you in a second That is the sun. I had to wipe off. Oh look, you can see it gets a little bit brighter in one spot. Moving the camera around. That'd be why this is so dangerous. I had to wipe off the outermost layer of soot, so it's just three layers. Kind of hard to move the camera around with my head in the box with it. <laughs> but, uh, this was really cool. I always wanted to do this. <laughs> um, the next step would probably be to get a lens and magnify the sun. Maybe I could see some sunspots.